the speaker's roster yesterday is still reverberating around the brain. There were some really stunning discussions, uh, elevated the topic in a number of ways, above and beyond just flight training is this and flight training is that, but it's more important now to kind of look at what it is that flight training has to do rather than what it is. Yeah, you know, some of the most materi interesting material I got presented was from people that are, come from outside aviation. Mm -hmm and adapting technologies that other industries have been using for years to flight training and to aviation in general. And for me personally in this crowd, I thought they found it compelling. I think that if some of those guys start a religion, I'm gonna be one of the first followers on the adaptation of these technologies to make training more efficient and the airplanes more safe. If you had to set out an objective for what you're trying to accomplish in these three very turbulent, very interesting days, what would those have been and ultimately did you meet it? The objective in these three days was to introduce the notion of using different methods for delivering the training material. I mean, if you agree that there's nothing new in aviation, that airplanes still fly the same the way they used to and weather is the same, then the question is, is how do we deliver it to the student in a more effective, more rememberable, more entertaining and more in a way that they're going to retain it in kind of real life scenarios except in a simulator? This is sometimes a difficult topic to grasp because there are no conceptual frameworks for most people in aviation and aviation training. So what we did was we brought in the experts from other fields to help explain how this is all going to come about. And then we followed that on with actual demonstrations of the use of that technology. So I think we did pretty good. I think the conference could have gone three weeks and we'd still have stuff to talk about. What stuck out for you in regards to the things that you saw or learned, or for that matter, what you saw others absorbing. After talking to everybody, I think, and I have talked to everybody that's attended since those presentations yesterday, no one argued. I mean, no one thought what Don Marinelli and his team were saying were in any way off the mark. Everybody seems very excited about the adaptation of this technology. So that was very gratifying because aviation tends to be a pretty high bound industry. Now, having said that, the folks that come to conferences like this are already motivated to find new ways to do things. So it might not be as easy as it first looks, but this was a great start. And what I've got now is I've got a whole bunch of flight schools and organizations ready to begin experimenting with us on all of these new things. How do we take all the amazing things we're talking about here, let them grow, and more important, transmit them and synergize with the rest of the community. Well, two things. I mean, we, we have to commit the bucks. With the understanding that we're playing the long game here, that mm -hmm. next quarter we don't have to start making money at it. Mm -hmm. But someday all of this will pay off. And the second thing is, is development organizations like this laboratory have got to follow suit and give away everything they do because we figure we, if, if we take it as far as we can, somebody else can take it farther. So being willing to, sh to share and to give away what you find is, is, and collaborate, I think, is going uh, is, is to be our salvation. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com. The $1 fuel, yeah. what did you learn? We learned a lot. I mean, there was a lot of data collected, and there's a lot of very interesting data that we were able to collect for ourselves and for our partners, and actually even for the city that was one of the sponsors of this event. One of the things that really worried me when we started was, what if flying gets less expensive to do and nobody comes? What if we're so far gone as an industry that it doesn't matter if, if it gets affordable again, it doesn't really change where we are? And it turned out that wasn't true, and I'm really delighted to hear that. Now, if you figure there's five different things you can do to reduce the cost of flying, and we only had control of one lever, and that was the cost of fuel. So instead of pulling it out a little, we pulled it all the way out and said, okay, let's see what happens. And the good news is, is pilots came back like crazy. Some 23% hadn't flown in a year. Pilots were out there fixing their airplanes that hadn't been fixed in a long time just so that they could fly again. And the traffic at this location just since that event is three times higher than normal. So pilots are still flying. Now it's gonna take a while to see how that really shakes out. 
But the point is, is that since we can't pull that one lever all the way out every time, if we can pull three or four of those levers part of the way out, in other words, reduce costs in a number of areas, we can bring pilots back. It's not too late mm -hmm. to fix the decline in flying yet. The Red Hawk Project. What are you learning? Where does it go? And more important, the thing I'm excited about is some of the follow-on about how you get these airplanes into other hands. Well, the big learning with the Red Hawk was if you can bring companies together on a project like this, the shareholders like the avionics guys and the engine guys, you can make a project like this work. And sometimes it's just as simple as picking up a phone and saying, hey, do you want to do this project with us and, and finding the right partners. You know, what we learned about it is that the serial number two, which came out of production a little while ago, was twice as good as serial number one. Mm -hmm. And we're going to learn how to make this better and faster and less expensive to build. Now, we've been running one of the Red Hawks, the one we brought to Oshkosh, hard in a training environment. We haven't had any mechanical problems with the airplane. Doesn't mean there's one coming, but we haven't had one yet. And all of the repairs we've had to make were in our own insulation mistakes. So I'm glad to say it was us that did it. But it's performing as well as we could have helped. We're getting the hours per gallon that we expected. The students like it. I like it. It's quiet. And it's been a great performer. But look at the platform it's built on. It's built on a classically wonderful trainer on the 172. So not a lot of surprises there. And the fact that there's a potential of getting trainers out for under a quarter million versus the 400,000 plus it's going to take to get into a new Skyhawk, well, that's icing on the cake. Well, we're sure we're going to be under that. We haven't quite set the price yet, but we're adapting new methods of not only manufacture, but how we source parts and how the various companies interact with one another to, the, to reduce the cost. So it's going to be great. And we've got some really great partners, including Brown Leasing, who's, who are developing a power by the hour lease for this, which make it very, very accessible for the schools. That changes everything. It really does change everything. And, uh, and they've, they've actually already ordered some airplanes to put into service so that they can test the Power by the Hour lease programs. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Two final questions. One, what did you learn from this year's migration? And how's planning going for 2014? Yeah, well, 2014, let me start with that question. You know, we, we've done, been very successful with migration. We doubled the size every year. We're getting pretty close to the capacity of the Skyport. You know, we're going to figure out how to have it here next year. And we've already set the date for next year. And it's going to be a high bar to improve on the content we had this year. But we have some very interesting things that we're, the lab is going to work on this year. And I think it's going to be worth attending. I'm very encouraged by what's happening right now. All of the speakers that we had are convinced that aviation can come back. I feel a lot better you know, coming here and talking to these schools and these training organizations. Everybody believes they can bring it back. And it's great to be around th this kind of optimism in aviation after all we've been through. So, so between now and 2014, uh, the, uh, the next migration, What's your workflow look like? What, what are your plans for taking all this and getting, your, getting it out to best effect? The feedback that we got from the participants this year is we need to find ways to build communities around flight training. And communities around flight training means communities around the tools that they use too. So we're going to be looking at things like national and international competitions on scored scenarios within the simulators and giving visibility to schools and students to practice and give incentive to practice. That's a major effort all by itself and finding different ways to create community at a more local level for the schools. And that might sound like that's not something necessarily a simulation company would do, but, but what this lab is about goes well beyond simulation into the other things that the flight schools are worried about. Thanks so much, Jerry.